it. Ringo's innocent. You poisoned him. Good boy. <laughs> yes, Ringo. Yes. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka okay, Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Blue Eye Samurai. We're now into episode three, which is called A Fixed Number of Paths. So the last episode was nuts, just like the season premiere was. We had Mizu make it to this village where she would have to take a boat to the island where she could find her objective, which is uh, who I believe to be her father. But unfortunately, the whole village was engaged in a festival that was going to basically have everybody drunk and partying. So she had to spend the night there and wait till the next day. So she decided to go and continue training while Ringo decided to stay in town and enjoy himself because he'd never been out of his town before. But unfortunately, her restful time did not last long because Misa was being pursued by not one, but two ops. The first being the four fangs, which were sent out by um, Heiji. And they attempted to take her out, but they'd learned very quickly that that was not an easy feat to do. She did manage to defeat all of them, including a particular person she'd met from her past and she'd actually made her first sword for. So that was a really cool full circle moment there. But then when she finally defeated uh, this person, she ended up sustaining a really bad wound. And this is when her other op in the form of Tygen showed up. He'd also been following her. So he sprung up after she'd finished having the battle of her life, like a little jerk, a little, little wuss, and challenged her to a duel. She did not have the strength to do it, however, because she sustained multiple injuries in her fight. So she ended up passing out and now Tygen has the option to take a dishonorable kill, which again, no one would know of, or to do the honorable thing, which is allow her to heal up and actually fight her like a man. So we'll see what happens there. Obviously she is the lead of the show, so I'm not that worried that he takes the former path. I'm excited to jump into this episode, so we're gonna do that. But just before I do, a reminder that I do a lot of reactions here on this channel, including other animes or animated shows. So if you'd like to support me and follow Follow this journey with me or anything else that I'm doing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And please show some love to this video if you are feeling it with some thumbs up and comments below. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right about now. It's only an infant. No, it doesn't even cry. The child makes no sound. Because it's sleeping? A half-breed. It's hardly human. Killing it is a mercy. Do it already. Hmm. I can't. Thank God. Oh, coward. I'll do oh, it. that's a cat. Okay. It takes a coward to take out a child. No, oh, not her whole life being scarred like this. Take the devil child and go. Oh my gosh. Mizu's life's been nothing but hell from like basically day one. And believe me, she would carry that trauma around her whole life even though she doesn't remember it. Mm -hmm. Show that you're still a little. Show that you're still a little. Some conscience, good to know. That's right, hands off. Don't touch him. With your bald head. Good thing you met Ringo, huh? Nice strong man to carry you. It's a nice feeling. The bad men will find you. We die. Oh, so your mama was on the drugs. If that was her, I don't know if that was her mama, but there's no good memories about her so far. Which one of the four fangs is dead? Pick one. All of them. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, oh God. <gasps> All of the shogunate absolute. Uh -huh. It's right there on the bed. Cheeks parted, winning. That's the illusion you went with? I really hope that's not her father. My right hand and both feet on land, fondest heart. Spare a cup of concern towards our purpose. Spare a cup of concern? That's, that's, a, that's one I might take. Can you spare a cup of concern? Hmm. Who's this v 50 freak now? Work is not bad. Wow, stitching is actually better than I think you did, girl. Making soup now? Is that your business? Medicine. Don't you have a wife to go home to? If he dies, you Shut die. up. See? Useful. 
Still convincing, huh? I didn't kill you when I easily could have. Oh, do you want to pat in the back? You barely survived our last match. That was no match. You're nowhere near my level. Okay. Hmm. I like your hair. Period. If you wanted me dead, you should have struck when you had the chance. The time to kill your enemy is when you can. And there would be no honor in that. Oh, like you care, bully. Then you are not a samurai. Did I say I was at any point? Three days. Okay, bye. Head back to your girlfriend. Master Eiji's broken blade is a good fit for him. Yeah, probably. Right down to the soul. Yeah, that's a heavy person who does not care about hearing her being heard. Greetings. Would you like a small child to eat? What do you want? As I trust you are a man of honor, I hope you can credit the same of me. You know she can read, right? <sighs> hey, I need you alive. Get out of my way. We have a contract, remember? Didn't sign it. I think that might be the first time Ringo's ever been on a horse. <laughs> there is no possibility this will be anything. Shut up and go home! One day to make sure he fights his demon samurai, and one day to bring him back with his honor restored. Mm. And if your father doesn't want to break a contract with the Shogun? The pigs ran into the woods, squealing with the shock of freedom. Again? Comparing her to a pig? What is wrong with you people? Why do men keep comparing Thank you! Damn, they just abandoned your ass. I don't blame them. The other shoe, princess. Serves you right. You should have learned to fight. Now you don't have money or teeth. What you gonna do? It's important I be there by morning. I can pay. Get in, sis. Welcome to the poor life. Didn't your daddy say he grew up on a farm? See, now you get to experience what he did. What he was trying to save you from. But I don't blame her. Honestly, that Shogun's son sounds like a demon on earth. So do what you gotta do, sis. Pretty. Is that Fuji? I do not know my Japanese geography. I'm sorry. I didn't see a mountain until I was 12 and ran away from home. Don't care. Enough fish and he could drink his fill. Not enough. He beat me instead. You took it out with someone else, so you're no better than him. The net or the sword. I could become my father, or I could cut my way free of the net. And still become a loser. That's very pretty. Kudos to the artists. They did a really good job. Do you have a tongue? Are words in there? Guess I'll just relax and wait to be ambushed. No one asked you to come along. I can beat you with any weapon you choose. A spear. Mm-hmm. The bad men will find you. Since you want to play cheap. Mm-hmm. Could have been the chopstick. Should have been. Mm-hmm. That was a Mr. Miyagi honk moment. Where the monster boy lived with his whore mother. Don't fight angry, Mizu. You had him until you were mad. Then you were a dog on our streets, living on gutter scraps. Does this make you feel like more of a man? Like, seriously, I don't know how you can say all this and feel good about yourself. I do hope he dies. Uh, I'll get my needle and thread. <laughs> Poor Ringo's like, well, apparently being an apprentice for you is just going to be stitching you up over and over again in the same spot. After I kill him, I'd rather you die. Work for me. You can't be my apprentice. I mean, I mean, look at you. Half limb to a half Just wit. kick him off the side of, just kick him off the side of the mountain right now. I could never work for you. Period. I always dreamt of greatness. Yeah, you're a coward. But now, I've actually seen what greatness looks like. And it ain't you. I can help greatness. Exactly, and you're not it. I'm great. No, you're not. Why'd you give him a rice ball? I wouldn't have given him. He can go get his own food. He wasn't even invited. He doesn't even go here. <laughs> My God. 
I like this voice actor's job. Did he get paid for grunting? Got it. You could have just tossed him off the mountain. Oh, he does talk. Talk? <laughs> it is the perfect place for an ambush, especially by Arrow. It's a tea party, guys. We're not uncivilized. Yeah, come on over. Have a seat. I'm going to freeze to death out here, covered in shit. <gasps> wow, not even a day away from home. Mm-hmm. And this is why he let you run away, because he knew you'd go back. You knew we'd end up like this? And I'd give up? Child, who taught you? Yeah, he's like, he literally knew you since you were born. Let's hire a horse and go home. See, now, my Virgo self, as soon as he said that, I would have to do it. I'd have to still do it. Just because he told me I couldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have brought your father the match if I didn't think it was the best thing. You did this? You brought in the Shogun's Oh, name. now she's definitely not going with you. There is happiness to be stolen as a wife to the right man. Stolen? To the wrong that man. word is very key. Bits and pieces over time. How is this good? Like, he's trying to sell this like it's a good thing. Yeah, see, that's a speech you should have waited until after you got back to Kyoto to give. That's enough. Akemi, come with me. Take your shriveled old dick and go cry for some other girl. Yeah, damn! <laughs> My last employer tried to have me entertain a man I knew would raise a hand to me. He told me a woman has no choice but mm, to accept her fate. Exactly. From Kyoto to Edo, uh, or Mihonoseki if you like. That's why, girl, use your feminine wiles. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, well, she was determined and you could have helped her, sir. The fact that you were trying to tell her that she had to basically abuse, uh, deal with abuse and that she used to steal a few moments of happiness here and there and be grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, like she said, is there much difference between her being sold like those other women? The only difference is that she's doing it in fine clothing. That kettle has been in the Shindo clan for 300 years. Beautiful. Beautiful ironwork. <laughs> I am unarmed, but for a small knife to cut bean cake. We have our swords. Shut up! Maybe I have 500 archers hidden in the cliffs around us. Mm-hmm. You don't think he actually came unarmed, right? I am connected with many men. Did that come out right? There are no white men in Japan. That's the law. No one would break the law. Except you, for the right price. Long-standing arrangements. Your business is unimportant. You can't muster the appearance of concern for your host. You can muster a cup of concern. 50,000 real. <clears throat> what am I going to do with that? In return, you would have to offer an assurance you will let go of all ill intention toward me and Fowler. Ooh, see the me maybe, but... You're right, Thumb. Exactly. I take it with me as a promise that you will never grasp a sword against us again. Ew! What? Why would you carry that around? Oh, hold on, hold on. You owe me a fight first. Why are me. you in this conversation? You cook? Oh my god, he actually talk talks. You cook. This you planned for. With an attack. Or a second offer. Perhaps not so pretty. Hmm. She's smart. How do you intend to reach Fowler in his island castle? Through the front door. Yeah, she's Re a direct kind. He would. <laughs> She's like, he's so dead. To reach him, you'd have to cross violent waters. Eight levels to reach his chamber. Oh, thank you time. for the instructions. Can you write a map? Do I draw a map for me, please? If you attempt an assault, you'll die before you see his face. Yeah, they said that about her not meeting Shinto either. A sake barrel. You want him to get in that? He's tiny. You're not actually considering getting in that. I'm really going to need you to stop telling me what I can and can't do. 20 years of that face that stink damn i hate him me too she's like me too let's say he gets through all that and guts your white man how does he get out of the castle not my problem yeah she's like i actually I didn't think of that your life Low within key. a blade's <laughs> length of abijah fowler's neck mm. i wish you luck in your escape yeah i mean that's fair enough honestly he doesn't have to help you at all what happens if i refuse what do you think? On the cliff surrounding this vale are 500 of my best archers. My small joke earlier was no joke. I knew it wasn't. You die where you stand. And Fowler lives. 
knowing him probably forever. <laughs> Get in or die now. You put your hands on me. I knew that hand was going the second you held up that ribbon. For a minute, I thought you believed him. I think there are archers, actually. Yeah, I don't think he was lying about that. He's very rich. Huh. He wasn't Of course lying. he wasn't. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. You forgot about this guy on the other side. He's probably going to take you. Oh, shit. Well, here comes Fee Five O Free. Uh, can you fight Ringo? Oh, Ringo, please. Don't do it. Ringo's innocent. You poisoned him. Good boy. Ha! Yes, Ringo. Yes. I'm not mad about that. But poor horsey. Useful. Hmm. Not you enjoying it, you psycho. Some greatness in you after all. True. What'd you do to the giant? Oh no, he's over the cliff somewhere. Uh, exactly! <laughs> your shielding. That was your timing. You you're deeply skilled. Hmm, didn't I say common you. ground? Told you how to get into the castle. Exactly. It's a shame our duel's set for tomorrow. I'd have to kill you before you can get your revenge. You're such a dumbass. Now tie him to several trees. His woman's waiting for him. He's no man. He's a demon. A demon. Ugh. Eyes like yours. Mm-hmm. Left you the sword at least. Stop following me, loser. I will be able to supply you with both after I've fulfilled my task. On the second day of autumn, I will meet you at the appointed shrine and you shall have the duel you deserve. Please accept this blade, which so well suits your hand. You wanted to go on the adventure, didn't you? Yeah, you really respect her and you don't even realize it yet. Although, then, you know, it's all going to go to hell when he finds out it's a girl. Oh. What the hell? Please, not the sword, father. Please, not the sword, father. Oh, it's Tygen. Oh, I guess I didn't think about the fact that he might... I thought that guy died, though, but I guess he didn't. Damn. Well, you know what? This is actually good timing, you guys, because if this hadn't gone down the way that it did, Tygen probably wouldn't have had respect for Mizu. He probably just would have wanted Mizu to get taken out and obviously someone of Heiji's stature and money and influence could probably create a situation to make Tygen seem... Like he came out the victor, or you know what I'm saying? Like he could do things to make sure that Tygen got what he wanted, which was his position and respect back. But this little adventure, and I was kind of wondering when Tygen showed up, like what the point of his being there and tagging along and being around Mizu was going to be. And now we know what it is, is that despite everything, you know, Tygen is still very much a misogynist. He's still very much xenophobic and prejudiced. However, that time he spent with Mizu whether he's ready to admit it or not has changed him a little and definitely changed his viewpoint on Mizu. Everything that he was saying about Mizu, all the insults and everything, unfortunately, are just conditioning. Pan, like I said at that time, was very xenophobic, did not want to hear anything about anyone who was not Japanese. They were literally demonized no matter what you were if you weren't Japanese. And kids were told, like like he said, we were told ghost stories and horror stories about what people with, you know, Euro features were, were like with light eyes or white skin or whatever. And when you're young and you don't know any better and the whole world around you, which again, in an isolated island of Japan at that time would have been very small, you're going to believe what, what's around you. You have no, no reason not to. And so he had all that mentality. All the things he was spewing at her were based on things that were untrue and he never took the time to get to know her. He just simply went from listening to the stories, being scared, bullying, which again, we didn't discover this episode that Tygen came from an abusive household. So unsurprisingly, he took that abusive nature and took it out on other people. It's sad. I really wish he hadn't chosen that, but that's why I said I really don't feel for him at the moment because he had another choice, but digressing. So he went from that to then just going into bullying and trying to hurt 
this person because out of, you know, ignorance, out of fear. And again, as I said, because of his background. So he never really got to know and see the kind of person that Mizu was because if he had taken the time, I think he would have recognized that the lies he was being told were just that. But this little excur excursion from choosing not to kill Mizu, which again, like I said, I knew he wouldn't because we saw that he was watching Mizu for a long time before he actually hid behind that rock and tried to challenge her. So he was really like looking at her swordsmanship, looking at her work and he respected it. He sees that there's craftsmanship. He sees that there's true talent there. And again, if he thought she was worthy of a duel, that again, really proves that he does believe that she's a worthy appoint opponent. So that respect is there on the amount of training and discipline and work that has obviously been put into Mizu's craft. But this spending time with her and having to be with her along this journey, seeing, I think this, this determination, this will, this, kind of blinders view that she has of her objective, I really think he really respects that because they have that mutual background. We saw him touch on it, how they both come from the same village. Again, we got his backstory around his father was a fisherman. Like he didn't really have much life outside of that. His whole span of his life was around fish and just making enough to get by and getting drunk. And that's not a really big world and it's definitely not a happy life. And so like he said, he worked really hard to get out of there and to try to change his life and be different. And he can see that here's Mizu, who is from a similar background, but actually even more disadvantaged because the entire world thinks that he's <laughs> thinks that she's a demon. But despite all that, she's trained herself, honed herself, and pulled herself out of that place. And of course, she's not really trying to get rich or famous or anything, but Again, I think he just sees that kinship and respects that Mizu also didn't let her life begin and end in, in, uh, in their hometown. And again, I think that she would have even fine growing up there if she didn't have such a burning hatred for her father, but, and also the people that created the situation that she's in. But anyways, back to why Tigan now, I think genuinely does respect. And we saw that after they got through their little adventure there and then had the whole meeting with Heiji, which I suppose we can talk about that. That was very interesting. Obviously Heiji went there to gauge and see what Mizu was about. Like, you know, obviously when you only hear stories about someone, you never really know what to believe. And at this point, I feel like stories of Mizu have been exaggerated. I'm pretty sure Heiji was wondering if Mizu was 10 feet tall and had, you know, fangs and, and <laughs> spikes coming out of her back because she took out the four fangs, right? She's taken out, she walked into the Shinto um, dojo and destroyed pretty much everybody. The stories I promised you back in those days, by the time it got to Heiji, were probably like, again, they're calling her a demon. They're saying she's not even human, right? So I think he went there to really assess how much was true. And again, we see with the bribe, he was trying to see, is this person really about this quest for revenge or are they just looking for a big check? So he tried the bribery, right? A man of money, that's what they try to do. They try to bribe people. He even showed with his little box of fingers, like you're not alone. See how many men who came in with a purpose and came in with a with morals sold it all for the right amount of money. I could do the same for you. And then again, like Mizu pointed out, he already knew that there was a chance that Mizu would say no. And I think he figured that Mizu would say no because if she did cut her way through the Shinto dojo and made her way all the way over here and met with him, all these things, I think he figured out that she probably was not the type to be easily dissuaded with money. She basically, he had the backup plan of, yeah, yeah, get into the barrel. I'll help you. I'll, I'll get you to where you need to go. And again, he thought, well, maybe if she's not, you know, if Mizu's not greedy, then maybe she's so reckless or so blinded by her hatred and passion that she'll be reckless enough to get in this barrel and basically leave herself at my mercy. And so thankfully Mizu knew right away that either way, this was not a good deal. There was no guarantees whatsoever if she got in that barrel that again, she wouldn't just be killed right? Because that there's no way she can wield in there. All it would take is 10 people with swords to go and poke, you know, poke a hole in a different side. So anyway, I really like the way she kind of played that. Uh, you know, of course, Tigan thinks that she's dumb, but just because she doesn't talk a lot doesn't mean she's dumb. She's actually very astute and she's a good judge of character. And a lot of that is thanks to her sword master as well. Her sword father was very much like her, a man of few words, and what he, when, but when he did speak, it mattered. And so anyway, that whole excursion with, you know, Tigan seeing that she is a lot smarter than she, well, than he gave her credit for, let's be real. And the fact that she handled herself well and really they protected each other getting away from all those archers. Tigan respects her. He respects Mizu and he doesn't, I mean, he keeps talking about the revenge, but honestly, the fact that he keeps bringing it up so much is exactly why I know he won't go through with it because why would he not just take it, right? As I said, he could, he could kill Mizu and tell anybody anything he wants and they would have no reason not to believe 
leave him, right? So yeah, that'll be interesting. So now that he's been brought before this demon, that is Fowler. We'll see whether or not, I mean, Fowler looks like the kind of man that would absolutely torture the crap out of Tygen. So I don't know if Tygen's built for that. I don't know. He seems pretty, pretty witch made to me, but we'll see what happens. As I said, he now has that uh, deeper respect. And I think also he doesn't like white people or foreigners. So I don't think he'll really want to work with this person at all either. But anyways, outside of that, we also had a little bit of Akemi. Akemi and her running away, her trip away from home didn't go exactly as planned. Uh, she, you know, quickly they got robbed, which is exactly what her handler said would happen. And then after she got robbed, she thought she had a ride to the, to the town, but the person giving her the ride ended up taking her in the wrong direction, which of course her handler did not do anything to stop because he wants to take her back. He basically is treating her like a tantruming child and thinking, you know, like, you know how kids do the thing where like, I'm running away from home. Whenever you tell them like to clean, clean their room or do their homework. And then they come back when they realize that they're scared and they don't know where to go once they cross the street. This is what he was hoping would happen. And Akemi probably would have fallen for it, except for the fact that her handler spilt the tea a little too soon about how he'd been basically playing this whole thing out and that he already planned for them to go right back. But uh, really what the clincher was, was basically him telling her that as a woman, she should consider herself lucky to end up with an abuser because he's rich, basically. Like be happy that the reason you're getting sold off into marriage is at least you're getting married to a man with money. He's still gonna be abusive. He's still gonna treat you like crap. He's still gonna treat you like a breeding ground. But other than that, you should be happy every so if you can steal a moment his actual words steal when you can steal a moment of happiness stealing indicates that you're not deserving right stealing means you're taking something that doesn't belong to you that wording is so important people i need people to understand how important it is that they use the word steal because that was the mentality of those men back then and again sadly even today there are still people out there who do not believe that women deserve to be truly happy they think that they've got their jobs aka being the breeders the cooks the the sub the some the servants to the men and that they should be happy with that if they have happiness at all and that's it find joy in it as i said like and then when she basically brought out the fact that oh what's the difference then between me and a prostitute and he's like oh well you know it's 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 completely different you're going to be in this nice fine house it's like so basically you're saying you're prostituting us both whether I'm poor or rich, the difference is I get to do it in nice clothes and be in a nice house, right? It really isn't any better, right? Money doesn't solve everything. Sure, she won't have to worry about going hungry or going naked, but living in fear, living in disgust, living in just constant misery, it's just not worth it no matter how nice the clothes are. You know what I mean? So anyways, she figured that out and she basically told him off, especially when she found out someone that she thought was on her side was actually the person who recommended for this, re sorry, recommended her for this. So she got in, she got a little bit uh, ingenious. She decided to use her feminine wiles and her brain. And she said, you know what? You won't take me there. I will find my way to this damn village. And so she said, all right, if you're gonna sell me, if I'm just a piece of property, I'm gonna choose how I'm gonna be used in that way then. I'm gonna be the person who brokers my own, my own sale, so to speak, right? Obviously it would not work that way in the long term, And I don't think she's got a plan for when she actually gets to this town, but I can't fault her for at least doing the best that she can. Cause yeah, her handler's a real dick. I know he does care for her. I do think he does care for her, but his small minded ideas, yeah, he should know her well enough to know that that wasn't gonna fly. So we'll see what happens when she gets to that town because Tygen is not there and he may not be back there for a while. He may not even be back at all now that we know where he's ended up. So yeah, a lot still that could happen here. I'm still very invested in the story. This is a really good episode and I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please let me know in the comments and with some likes and I will see you in the next video.